be turning to Proverbs chapter number 22. While you're turning there, uh, Richie wanted me to announce he's working up a program to, to try to get the people of our church to volunteer to read and, and have it reported one book out of the New Testament and then when we're done, when he's done, we'll have a whole recording of the New Testament read by our church people. It's kind of a promotional deal to uh, kind of promote Bible reading in our church. We can use more Bible reading. And uh, so if you're interested in helping him with that, uh, he's got more information for you, but you can get with Brother Richie and find out about that. It's for all ages. As long as you, if you're old enough to read, you can do it and, uh, and work it out with him to get it recorded and we'll put it on a CD. Proverbs chapter number 22. And uh, we'll be looking at various things through this whole chapter. But I want to read verse number one. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches. I want to talk this afternoon about a good name. When I first read that part about a good name, the only thing I could think of is when the Bible says that our names are written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. And I want to just, just, just take a minute just take a second right here at the beginning and just say, I'm thankful that my name is written there. And uh, it, it's not a good name because it's my name. It's a good name because he wrote it down there. The old song says, there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine. I'm thankful for that. A good name. But we're talking about a name here on this earth. And uh, what we're talking about here has to do with a person's reputation. A name has to do with the power of influence. A good name means something to the people who know it. A good name is one that when people hear that name, it has a positive effect. I thought about the name... The name Baptist, you know, that's a that's a good name. Can I give an amen? It's a name that has a lot of history and heritage and uh, a, a good deal of influence. I can't understand the idea, the modern idea today, of dropping the Baptist name for uh, for something that has no name. Uh, and no identity as to what they believe or what they practice. That that doesn't uh, that doesn't hold water with me. I mean, you go into a new town and you're looking for a church to go to, and it's just such and such church. Right. It could be anything from Baptist to Catholicism. You don't have any idea what they believe or even claim to believe. I, I'm all about that Baptist name. I mean, I'm about being saved first, but after that, I'm about being a Baptist. And, uh, and, and we're talking about a good name. What's involved in a good name? Well, a couple of three things here in this chapter of Proverbs. First of all, having a good name involves, verse number six tells us, some good training. Train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. If you want your kids to have a good Christian reputation, you're going to have to teach them some things. Now, if you teach them some things, that's no guarantee that they're going to do them when they get old. This proverb, this verse in Proverbs is never meant to be a promise it's not a promise that your kids will never depart from the good way and the right way. It just means that after you teach them, they, you, they, they can't be untaught. That they'll always have that, that retention of that information that you taught them. Now, they'll never be able to get away from their training. 
but it is a measure of preparation uh, for your children. If they are to be reputable, somebody's got to teach them. If you're uh, if you're going to be a reputable Christian witness, you're going to need to know some things. You're going to have to know uh, some right. From the wrong, you're going to have to know what the Word of God says. How many of you know that if the Jehovah's Witness come to your door and you're going to you're going to preach the gospel to them, you better know what the Word of God says because some of them do. If the Mormons come, you better know because they know some of what God's Word says. The LGBTQ crowd or whatever it's called in our in our day, the homosexual crowd, they have some knowledge of the Word of God. And they'll use it, and they'll use your ignorance of the Word of God to their advantage. You're going to need to know some stuff. Uh, if you're going to be a good Christian witness, you're going to need to know how to bring your body, as the Bible says, bring your body under subjection. You're going to have to know how to control yourself. You're going to have to learn how not to follow the normal crowd and the normal society of the world that we live in. Good training. If you're going to be a reputable preacher, you need to have some training. That's why it's important for us to get our kids and keep our kids in church. You'll never know if God's going to call your son to preach or your grandson to preach. You don't know if God's going to call your daughter or your granddaughter to pre be a preacher's wife. My wife says, God help us right here. You don't know. They need to be trained. Well, preacher, I haven't had much good training in my life. That's okay, but you don't have to keep going down that road. You can get in the Word of God and you can get in the church and get involved in Bible study and educate yourself. Sometimes we have to educate ourselves. And educate yourselves. Ignorant Christians are not reputable. Ignorant Christians are not the one people are looking to for answers. They're looking for somebody that knows something. Something else here involved in a good name. Verse number 9 a good name involves a bountiful eye. He that hath a bountiful eye shall be blessed, for he giveth of his bread to the poor. Can I tell you this afternoon, a reputable person is one that look, that's looking into the future. Think about it. A reputable president is one that considers the future of America. A reputable financier is one that is looking to see what your money and your markets will do in the future. The only future looking I do with my money is to see what bills are coming in. Somebody say amen. A reputable parent is one that's looking at the future of their children. A reputable pastor is one that's thinking about the future of the church. But there's more to it here than just considering the future, but there is an expectation. That's what that word bountiful means here. There's, a, there's, a, there's an expectation of the future that God's going to do something good. You know, that's something I've learned about Baptists over the last 46 years of being in Baptist churches. And that is that there are a lot of negative Nellies sitting on the views in Baptist churches. That's right. Amen, preacher. <laughs> on any given day, you ask them some questions and the answers you're going to get is nobody's going to get saved and, uh, and the church is going to die and the Lord's forgot about us. By the way, those kind of people, they get titled with a name, but it's not a good one. Somebody say amen. Why would any lost person seek for hope from somebody that doesn't have a bountiful life? Why would any new believer try to learn something from somebody, from some Christian, that never looks down into the future and sees anything good that God's going to do? Why would any new preacher look for encouragement from, from a fellow Christian who 
always only sees the negative coming down the road. This verse tells us if you'll look ahead expecting the Lord to do something, then you'll have something that you can give to others. He said he gives of, uh, uh, of his bread to the poor. If you'll be an encouragement, you'll have something to give to other people. You know what's encouraging to me? When I got saved, it wasn't the ones who said, well, I can't believe he got saved. It was the ones who said, hey, this is just the beginning, son. When I got married, it wasn't the ones who were saying, well, this ain't never going to work. It was the encouragement that I got from God's people to say, hey, God's got something good coming for you too. God's going to use you. When I surrendered to preach, it wasn't the ones that said, well, this ain't never going to make it in the ministry. That's not the encouragement, but it was God's people that said, well, I wasn't surprised when you surrendered to preach. I never understood that because it sure surprised me. <laughs> now, I'm pretty sure God was taken aback. <laughs> it was the one who says God's going to use you. Future expectation. I don't know about you, but I want to have a reputation of faith and encouragement. Not doubt and discouragement. One more thing here in verse number 28. A good name has to do with upholding the ancient landmark. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have set. That, that landmark, that ancient landmark is nothing more. Uh, this had to do with Israel and the boundaries that God had set up for them in the land that they possessed. There were boundary markers for the land. There were, you know, you know, just like if we survey a piece of property today, they'll put boundary markers. And these were set up by God and they were not to be removed. To mess with those markers was a, was a sin against God. Well, that's a picture lesson for us. God has given us boundaries and listen, friends, they are not to be messed with. What about the landmark of biblical marriage? You want to have a good Christian reputation, it's going to be found among adults that are living together in biblical marriage relationships. What about the landmarks of doctrine? I wouldn't give you two cents for a preacher that preaches in one way this Sunday and another way the next Sunday. Doctrinal boundaries. We need to get settled on the fundamental doctrines of our faith and leave them alone. Leave them alone. Don't be messing with them. Don't be messing with how a person is saved. If they're saved by grace through faith. Leave it alone. We don't need to be messing with what our job is as believers. We have been commissioned to go and tell, preach the gospel to every creature. That's what our job is. People are flocking to what's called reformed churches today. It ain't nothing more than modern day Calvinism. That's all it is. Let me tell you something. How is a Calvinist supposed to have a bountiful eye? How is somebody evangelizing in the Calvinist world going to have a bountiful eye? I tell you, we need to uh, we, we need to leave our doctrines alone. What's right, what 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 was right is still right. And Jesus can save anybody. If Jesus is going to save them the same way He saved you and me. Just leave our doctrines alone. What about the landmark of the Bible? What we needed was an accurate translation of the Word of God in our language, and we got it. People need to quit messing with it. The more they mess with it, the worse it's getting. The more they mess with it, the more the message is changing a little bit each time. The more they're messing with it, the more it gets left out each time. It's a landmark. Leave it alone. 
Thank God for my King James Bible. And I'm not ashamed of that. Uh, what about the landmark of the church? The Lord's church. He has set up His church the way that He wanted it to be. And He doesn't expect it to be messed with. The way you become a member, that's by His design. By, bat by scriptural baptism. Uh, the Lord's church was not ecumenical. It was never designed to be interdenominational. Uh, it, it, it's the Lord's church. The Lord designed His church to be local, to be autonomous. What in the world does that mean? That means that nobody tells us what to do out here in Highland. We go by the Word of God. He designed it to be visible. Listen to this now. He designed it to be a physical assembly. Forsaking not the assembling of yourselves together. Our reputation as a church depends on our resolve to uphold biblical boundaries and doctrines. God help us. I don't want our church to become something that nobody knows what we believe. And nobody can tell what we believe. Nobody can identify what we are. I don't want that. A good name is not just something that we pull out of thin air. I mean, that's how we named our kids. We didn't give them a good name. Uh, Emily, uh, we got her name off of a tombstone out in a cemetery somewhere. Her middle, her middle name. Uh, but, but we're talking about a good name, a good reputation, not, not just something we pull out of thin air, but it's an identity that speaks of our integrity, our training, our nonconformity to this world, and our consistency as Christians. The older I get, the more important it becomes to me that when I'm gone, I can leave behind a legacy of faith and consistency. I want my grandkids to be able to say, Paul, Paul never changed his convictions. Never changed. He was faithful to what he believed all the way to the end. I feel the same way about our church. We may not win any awards from the ministerial alliance out here. But when Jesus comes, may it be said of the Highland Baptist Church, they believed in educating themselves in the things of God. Uh, not just a melting pot of beliefs, but they educate. They train themselves and their kids in the doctrines of God. May it be said of us, they believed, that, uh, they believed in God to move and to work and to lead and to bless and may we be ever known as an encouraging church and not a discouraging church. And may we, may it be said of our church that though the world changed all around us, and the churches all around us began to conform to the things of this world, may it be said of our church, they never changed what they believed in practice. 1903. King James Bible, Missionary Baptist, 2024, King James Bible, and we're still Missionary Baptist. And I hope it's that way until Jesus comes. Amen. Let's stand. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for this day that you've given us to come into your house to sing praises and lift up the name of Jesus. Lord, to brag on you for a little while about the goodness and grace of God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the old ancient landmarks that you set, aside, set, set in place, the boundaries that we're not to go beyond, the, the, the boundaries that we're not to mess with. Lord, we just, uh, we just ask you to help us to uphold the doctrines of God, to adorn the doctrines of God in this place and in our lives. Lord, help us to have the kind of name where uh, even, even if it's mocked at and, and even if it brings up bad feelings in the world, Lord, that it could be a name, an identity that's reputable and honorable and faithful in the sight of God. 
Lord, we thank you for that. We just ask you to help us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.